Well, and I did some really desperate things. You were talking about cutting scripture out and putting it in your shoes and walking on it. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you a couple things I did. Jeremiah said, I found your words and I did eat them. You ate it. Did you? you? (laughs) Did you make cookies? What did you do? You ate paper? Paper? Oh, (laughs) I need to know. (laughs) Alphabet soup. Hi, friends. Welcome to Joyce Meyer's Talk It Out podcast, where my friends and I talk about God's Word and the real stuff of life, and we hold nothing back. I'm Ginger Stocky with Aaron Cluley, Jay, and of course, Joyce Meyer. We're all in different stages of life. A young career woman and mom to two sweet kiddos. An accomplished songwriter facing an unexpected new life's journey. A leader, creative, and author with a heart for adventure and a world-renowned Bible teacher whose personal story has impacted millions. And there's you. Because sometimes you just need to talk about life with your girlfriends. So consider yourself one of us and let's talk it out. Hi friends, you are going to be so glad that you're here today. Not only because we're talking about something literally life-changing, one of the most important things that we can talk about, but also because Joyce is in a really feisty mood today. <laughs> she really is. We've just been having so much fun before we ever started. Yeah. So we'll see what happens. We were talking about a social media post that was recently on um, Joyce Meyer on Instagram. And uh, <laughs> Danny, um, Joyce's son, Dan, likes to scare. He, he likes, likes to, to scare, scare you. <laughs> he videotapes it. <laughs> Every now and then. Yeah. For our and, enjoyment. But you have a plan. So I said, the next time he does it, I'm going to act like I'm having a heart attack and scare the tar out of him. <laughs> he will end up having a heart attack. Yeah. That is Jokes so funny. Yeah. <laughs> Every video he records like that, you're always in the cutest jammies, though. I know. It's a cute leopard jammies. Always I in told the him, I said, jammies. I've got my pajamas on. Don't put that on Facebook. <laughs> he said, nobody cares. Your, no, your they're pajamas so cute. are always so cute. They I would are. wear it outside. Yeah. Throw some heels on. I have on a Joyce Jammy set. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Inner jammy still looking better <laughs> than Looking better than, than our clothes. clothes. Yeah, yeah, exactly. My pajamas do look pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping like a queen. <laughs> well, today we are going to talk about um, in fact, let me just start with some questions. Do you ever feel like reading the Bible is intimidating? You just don't know why or how to do it, or you just maybe you think it's boring. So we're going to just knock all that away and help you understand why it's so valuable and some of the nitty gritty on the why, the how, the where, the when, yeah. all of it about studying the Bible. So Joyce, you've talked about this so much. You've talked about the fact that it changed your life. It's changed all of our mm-hmm. lives. But it's a hard thing to jump into if either you have no idea how to do it or you've tried and have not been successful. Well, I think it's one of the things that the devil lies to people about. Mm-hmm. He tells them, you can't understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, but the Holy Spirit lives in the believer, and he is our teacher. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we can't understand it. We just have to trust him to teach us. and. Yeah. I know a lot of people want to change. Mm-hmm. Every one of us sitting here, there's habits that we'd like to see changed, and yeah. probably most people watching. And in 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18, it says, Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. And all of us with unveiled face, because we continue to behold in the Word of God as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are constantly being changed into his very own image. Mm. So you can't change without the word of God. They said the word is like a mirror. And if you think about it, you could have dirt all over your face. But if you didn't look in the mirror, you wouldn't know it. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so the word actually shows us what we should be. Mm-hmm. And we see then what we're not. It's not under condemnation. Mm-hmm. Right. But it's really for learning. Yeah. And then we can go to the Holy Spirit and say, I want you to change this in me. Yeah. And I, I love the way that you've described it before as 
as a source of medicine. Mm-hmm. Like the word is really a medicine cabinet. So we're, we're going to start with that and yeah. just hear how Joyce explains that. It may not be exactly the kind of medicine cabinet you thought about originally. The Word of God is actually medicine for your soul. Now, you know, you can go to the drugstore and you can get medicine for your physical body, but you can't go to the drugstore and get medicine for your soul. The Word of God is the only thing that can get inside of your mind and emotions and heal them. Repeatedly, we are told to meditate on God's Word day and night. Proverbs 4, verses 20 through 22 says, My son, attend to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. Now listen to this, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Well, you know, the Hebrew word for health in verse 22 is actually medicine. God's word is medicine to all of our flesh. And Isaac Leeser's translation of Exodus 15, 26 reads, I am the Lord your physician. The medicine he prescribes is his word. I absolutely love that. You see, you have to understand that when you read the Word of God, it's not like just reading a magazine or or even reading a book that somebody has written. It's, It's different because the Word of God is full of God's power. And I believe that when I'm teaching the Word, that whatever I'm teaching on, actually there's power in that to deliver people in that area or to set them free. For example, if I was teaching on anger, I think there's power in that to help people who have an anger issue be healed from that. Psalm 107.20 says, He sends forth His Word and heals them and rescues them from the pit and from destruction. And you know, for many, many, many years, I have clung to that Scripture and believed that when I am teaching the Word, that people are healed in their mind, in their emotions, in their physical body, every area where they need healing. There's no place that you hurt that God can't reach and heal you. It goes on to say, Oh, that men would praise and confess to the Lord for His goodness and loving kindness and His wonderful works to the children of men. And let them sacrifice the sacrifices of thanksgiving and rehearse His deeds with shouts of joy and singing. I tell you, studying the Word of God will add joy to our life. That is so basic. It's so simplistic, and it's so true and important that there is healing for everything that we need in the Word of God and that it will add joy to our life. But if we don't touch it, if we don't open it, if we don't take that medicine, then we don't get what we need. So that's really what we want to help encourage everybody with. It's very basic. You can see so plain, like people want to know how to study the Bible. Yeah. Well... For me, in the beginning when I started, I studied in areas that I was having problems with. Mm -hmm. And like anger was one of my problems. And so I looked up every scripture I could find on anger and I studied them. And, you know, the the Bible says that the word of God renews our mind. Mm -hmm. And so when you begin to think different, then you begin to act different. Mm -hmm. And so... I always use the example that if I've got a headache, I'm not going to put a Band-Aid on my head. I'm going to take an aspirin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I cut my finger, I'm not going to stick an aspirin in it. I'll put a Band-Aid on it. So we know how to minister to our natural body, but you can minister to your spirit Mm -hmm. the same way by studying what you need. It's not just a matter of, oh, I'm going to read a chapter today and I've fulfilled my obligation. Mm -hmm. It's, It's really a book to help you in every area of your life. Yeah. I love what you're saying. Just a couple of days ago, I've, I've like lived this out. And so, you know, verses about the, our words that we speak and how important that is and all of that. And so I've had a couple of days where I haven't done the best job of that. And so as I'm thinking through it, I'm, verses are coming back to my mind, like, let the words of your mouth and the meditations of your heart be pleasing to God. I did not do that well, so <laughs> God forgive me. I needed to go ask for forgiveness from somebody else. And for those things to stir up inside of me when I'm having a real-life situation, it's mm-hmm. not just a bunch of like 
these and thous. This was like real life yeah. application that I messed up and God had the answer in his word of how to go about it. The word of God is our medicine cabinet, you yeah. know, and Satan really tries to trick us when we're in those moments mm-hmm. of feeling low, defeated, whatever's going on with our soul that's that we feel is unfixable. It's easy to isolate and not want to get up and go to the medicine cabinet, which is the word of God to, yeah. to feast off of it. Because when I, I know when I go through really tough times, the last thing I want to do is study. No. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'd rather sit and suffer. I'd rather just, you know, a pity party, yeah. you know, like yeah. I just, I, I don't really want to sit and study, but, but like the older I get, the less the Bible has become a memory verse to learn, you know, mm-hmm. just a scripture, a scripture, a scripture, which those are good mm-hmm. because now fast forward, I'm able to glean off of those. When I can't pick up the Bible, I can feast off of the things that right. are naturally in my mind. Yeah. They just come up. Those scriptures come up. But now I look less of like doing something to check a list off and more like now I go to the word at, for an answer, an antidote. I want to feel better, be better, do better, mm-hmm. you know, so. Mm-hmm. One of the things that I always pray is that as I take in the Word of God, that the Word of God pours out of me. Mm. You know, it has to be more than just words on a page. It has to become a part of of who I am and then have that ready when I need it, like you just said, so that those those things come to my mind when I need to think differently Mm -hmm. or change my words or encourage someone else that it pours out of me to other people. But if you don't know what medicine to take. Right. Or if you don't think you have the prescription, you mm-hmm. know, um, you have to start somewhere. So we want to answer like all of those questions, who, what, when, where, how, and why today. So Joyce, let me, let me just put you on a shelf for a minute. Oh, okay. Because, only because <laughs> everybody knows the the... Teacher, the preacher, you've got this. You you study the word, and it's changed your life. And it's easy for people to say, "But but that's for Joyce, and she's here." But that's not how it works, you know. For it's the same for for all of us. So mm-hmm. I want to ask you guys, and then we'll let Joyce tell us how to really make it work. <laughs> how to really do it? Yeah. <laughs> ask you guys, how were some of those ways over the years that you have seen mm-hmm. the Bible come to life for you? I've had to, in the past couple of years, ask for it too, because even growing up in the church and being raised with the Bible, it wasn't exciting to me, and I thought it was boring. And so even as an adult, that would creep in, and I'd go through seasons of, I love it. This is great. I'm getting so much. I'm fine for now. And so I asked God one day, which, you know, if you ask Him, He actually might answer you. Mm-hmm. Um, can you please give me like a hunger to to want to read your word and like show me something yeah, in that's here. great and I cannot tell you that changed everything and I don't just say that it, it literally I read the Bible that day and like things were coming alive and I was seeing things that I've read before in a whole new light like yeah. details were sticking out to me and I would mm-hmm. say I didn't know that's what that meant and I've and since then like I've I've want to study I don't always do it right but I yeah. think that's a big step is you have to ask for him to meet you there and God will Yeah, I think a big part of it is that hunger, desiring the Mm -hmm. hunger, um, Mm -hmm. because I used to want, like I've said this before, like in my Bible, I wanted the highlighters with all the different colors, like Mm -hmm. different, it just, it was very Pharisee of me, Mm -hmm. you know, I want to look like, I have been reading my scripture, you know. (laughs) Look at all the colors, this is evidence. (laughs) Yeah, I hope, I open my book, so look at how colorful it is, like, (laughs) you know, it's, it was like. A badge of honor back yeah. in, back then. Um, it would and, and when you ask for the hunger, when I went through these past few years of really going through some tough stuff, um, it, I I could care less about how colorful my Bible mm. was. Mm. I needed it to come alive in me. I needed it to rescue me. I needed it to heal me. I actually needed it to save my life and to yeah. like snatch my mind out of this spiral that I was going down. So yeah. it's come alive in a different way where I was like, I have to look at even the Bible a different way. And I pivoted and I've, I even brought this here because mm-hmm. like I literally started writing scripture and coloring, mm-hmm. you know, like yeah. it, it had to be, it had to look different, feel different. Even though I felt dark and gloomy, I used colorful things to write what I took from it to take notes in it. Like the Bible had to come off the pages for me. Yeah. And sometimes like even writing it down for me was different. I used 
apps. Mm-hmm. It just has come alive. Yeah, that's really practical. That's good. P- the practical way to make it go with me where I needed to go. I've talked about the fact that when I didn't have, I couldn't f- physically feel like I, well, spiritually didn't feel like I could stand on his word. I would put scriptures in my shoes that I'm like, I don't hardly believe any of this right now, but I'm just going to stick it in my shoes and literally stand on it. You know, like yeah. I just had to make it come alive to me because I needed it to save my life. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I, I just totally agree with that. I think there's something so beautiful when you're in such a dark place, God will meet you there in his word and yeah. he will show up and it, it isn't just, it's not just words on a page, like it becomes your breath and it's your lifeline. And I literally have nothing else but the words you're promising on this page. And I don't believe it, but mm. I, you promise this is what you, you love me, you're for me. So I stand on this today. So it becomes, it isn't words, it's breath. Yeah. 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 It's oxygen. It's I what I need yeah. to breathe. Yeah. Good. Well, for you, Joyce, what people often forget, they, they see you now sharing the word with boldness and, and knowledge, but you were once a young girl with a whole lot of hurts and a young woman going through really hard times. So you had to do the same thing. You, you had to discover how all this works well, for I you. I did some really desperate things. You were talking about cutting scripture out and putting it in your shoes and walking on it. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you a couple things I did. Uh, Jeremiah said, I found your words and I did eat them. You made it. <laughs> did you? <laughs> did you make cookies? What did you no. do? You made paper? Paper? Oh, no. I need to know. <laughs> Alphabet soup? <laughs> no. Matthew 11 says, Come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will ease, relieve, and refresh your souls. Uh-huh. Take my yoke on you and learn of me, uh-huh. for I am humble, gentle, meek, and lowly. Mm. And I tell you, I wanted to be humble and gentle and meek and lowly so bad. I cut it out of my Bible and ate it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that, that is, is that determination. determination. Desperate. You know what? It sounds ridiculous, but God sees that. Yeah. And he yeah. saw how desperate You're I was desperate. He knows to your do heart. it. And mm-hmm. another thing I did was the Bible of talks fiber about in your diet. I'm sorry, dying go ahead. to self. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible talks about dying to self uh-huh. and uh, about burying the old man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so I actually went to a graveyard one day. <laughs> What did you do? <laughs> and I just stood there and I said, all right, I'm considering myself dead to sin. <laughs> I bury myself. That is awesome. And yeah. I am expecting you to resurrect me wow. as a new person. But the Bible talks about that. that like the great. foolish things, he'll take the foolish things to confound the wise. And yeah. sometimes like when you get to a place where you really get that hunger, like standing on his word Eating is, it's just like, I don't okay. think I've ever told anybody that. <laughs> but thank I you for not sharing these stories. Like, this is just, awesome. It's amazing. It like, is. And it shows, like, it's so, it gives so much hope for someone like me that's like, I'm a very literal person. Yeah. And I've tried to do the super spiritual, like, God, just Holy Spirit, you know. No, I just need to stand on it. I, if I got to eat it, fine. Like, whatever. <laughs> mm-hmm. But I do believe God meets us where we are and to see how far you've come from that. Now, that doesn't mean everybody needs to cut their Bible right. up and I'm eat it. Eating. Right. I'm on a low-carb diet. No. <laughs> <laughs> and not everybody <laughs> needs to go to the graveyard. But, you know, it was... You were desperate. For me, it was a, yeah. a physical... Mm-hmm. Yeah. Example of how bad I wanted yeah. to be what God wanted me yeah. to be. Absolutely. And uh, I want to make a suggestion that really helped me. I think we read the Bible way too fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I remember reading a book, um, and it was suggested in it that you you take a scripture and you read it very slowly. Mm-hmm. And think about each word and what Mm -hmm. you get out of it. And I literally felt God's power coming off that page and ministering to me. Yeah. Because we're not just trying to read the Bible to say, oh, I got so many chapters in Mm -hmm. today. Isn't God proud of me? We don't read the Bible for God. He already knows it. Right. It's for us. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. That we read it. And I think everybody has, the, I know I had that wrong conception, you know, like I had to read the Bible every day because I didn't want get God to be mad at me. And then right. one day, you know, the, the Lord just spoke to me. You're not, you're not doing this for me. Mm-hmm. You need to do it for yourself. Yeah. That's, a, there's a lot of freedom in that. Like mm-hmm. this morning, for example, I just getting people out the door and stuff. I had time for a scripture. One verse was all I got <laughs> to this morning. 
And I thought, maybe it's not even worth it. Like, is it worth even the time to do this? And I thought, no, that one verse is probably power packed with something. Yeah. So I wrote it down and it was just like that. I took the words one at a time and I thought, wow, this is so good. Like I'm going to, it was all about peace. I'm going to stand in that peace today. So I've actually thought about it today because mm-hmm. I didn't try to cram all this stuff in five minutes. I took one thing mm-hmm. and now that one thing I can think about today. So that's one nineteen eleven says, I have hidden your word in my oh, heart yeah, yeah. That, that I might not sin against you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So when you hide his word in your mm-hmm. heart, it actually keeps you from sin because the Holy Spirit, it says he'll bring things to our remembrance when we need them. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. So he if does. you put it in there, yeah. when you need it, the Holy Spirit will prompt you mm-hmm. to bring it out. It's so great, too, the way God takes what you need and what you need and what you need, all of us so individually yeah, yeah. to bring the word to life in us because it it's living. Like you said, it's it's breath to us. Yeah. It's not just words on a page that um, you know, it it's not going to impact some people. Like yeah. some people right. love a certain book and other people don't so much. Th- this book is different. Yeah. This book has something for everyone. And we all need to take it in our, our own way. And God knows what that is. And it helps us through His Holy Spirit, yeah. walks us through so much. One of the things that, that I did really early in is separate the idea of reading the Bible from who God is. Like I remember when I was... I don't know, in high school or something, just reading every scripture I could about how Jesus was rejected because I felt rejected at that time. And it taught me that he felt that too. And that was huge for me and how he dealt with it. And then who God said I was, that I was not rejected, that I was his child. So it became who Jesus was to me. It didn't become just the Bible. It didn't yeah. become just words on a page. Yeah. So from there, when I needed God, when I needed more of, of Jesus in my life, that's where I found Him. Yeah. That's where we connected. So you yeah. know, being able to kind of separate that, this is what I have to that's do. Good. That's it's, really good. This is how I find mm-hmm. who, who God is for me right now. Yeah, and it's important to not look at the Bible as a his, just a history book. Yeah, like you just said, like in Hebrews four and twelve, it talks about that the the Bible is is alive and active right now. Yeah, and that's something that had to help me because when I was going through divorce, I didn't want to hear about Joseph or Job or any of those old stories. I was like, I don't want to hear about. You didn't want to hear about Job. <laughs> I, I, didn't want to, I, I would think that would really cheer you yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, oh, Job, I hate that for you. Like, <laughs> like I was just it's like, a bad day, Job. It's a bad day for you, Job. Me yeah. too, Job. And I don't like your story. You know, because my big thing was just like, you know, because Job was rewarded with everything, you know, double for his trouble. But if I'm you're like, read Job, read the last chapter. Exactly. <laughs> that's when it gets, yeah, that's when it gets really good. But I was just like, well, what about the first part? Like, you know, like for me, because I was just in it, I'm like, yeah. I don't want to just be like, well, God's going to give me double. I liked what I had at the moment. You know, now yeah. I'm in a place mm-hmm. now where that's, though, you know, it, like that that story means a lot more to me now because I am past the hurt of and, and the acceptance of that part of my life is now over, you know, I can move forward now and pray for better. But like in that season, I was like, I didn't want to do that. I don't want to hear about those old stories. But then God kept reminding me, no, this, this book is alive mm-hmm. and it's active right now. Especially Something. when you're stuck in the why questions. Sometimes mm-hmm. you got to forget the whys mm-hmm. and get to the good stuff. Get yeah. to what God does to redeem the whys. You got to know what to read yeah. at the time. And that's yeah. the thing that I think Aaron said this before, just about like, we can, you can even Google like scriptures on healing scriptures on joy. And so that's what I had to like start doing. It's like finding scriptures that can help me be better and have a better Mm -hmm. mindset and Mm -hmm. and restore my faith and restore my hope versus all the things that were... So you were taking the right medicine for the right ailment. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. One of the first scriptures 45 years ago that God caused to come alive for me was John 8, 31 and 32. Mm -hmm. If you continue in my word... And continue is the important thing. Mm-hmm. Don't give then up. Then are you my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Mm-hmm. That was the very first, one of the first scriptures that that I learned. And, uh, of course, the implied point there is that the Word will make you free if you do it. You know, it's not just reading it that's mm-hmm. going to make you do it. But 
the Word of God does have the power in it. Yeah. To set you free from yeah. anger, from self-pity, from unforgiveness, mm -hmm. from sickness and disease. There's power in the Word, and that's the thing that people have to understand. It's not just like any word. There's power inherent in the Word. Yeah. And like meditating on the Word is like chewing your food. If you, they tell you if you don't chew your food properly, you miss the nutrition in it. Mm -hmm. If you just, the more you chew it, the more you get the nutrition out yeah. of it. And so meditating on the word is like chewing the word. Where yeah. you, the more you meditate on it, the more you get out of it. And mm -hmm. so, like when you're reading some of these stories in the Bible, put yourself in that story. Mm -hmm. You know, think about. How did Joseph feel? Yeah. You know, how did Job feel? Hmm. What was it like for Jonah in that whale's belly? Yeah. You know, what a crazy what did thought. It smell like? Mm -mm. No, <laughs> no, I thought let's about get, that. Let's get real. I mean, that had. <laughs> mm, yeah. Wee, Lord. No Not wonder pleasant. he repented. Yes. <laughs> uh, the Word of God is just really amazing. And if people don't just look at it like this old dead book that, you know, is centuries old that doesn't relate to me anymore, Hebrews 4 says, We have a high priest who understands, Yeah, mm -hmm. and I love that, because I always felt a little bit like the odd duck out because I wasn't like every other woman because mm -hmm. of this call in my life. I didn't really want to do a lot of what other women wanted to do. I mean, I wanted to stay home and study and seek God, and, and uh, so I felt misunderstood a lot, mm -hmm. and that really helped me to know that Jesus understands us and every one of us I think everybody feels kind of weird in, a, in their own way mm -hmm. yeah. and, but Jesus understands each and every one of us mm -hmm. because he's been tempted in all points just like we have yet he never sinned yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. therefore we can come boldly to the throne mm -hmm. and ask for the help that we need in plenty of time to get it can I ask a question I think I'm on a shelf and I got off. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Well, we, d we did not want to leave you on that shelf for long, just for that no, one no. minute. I would like you to answer my question, so don't get on the shelf okay. again. Um, to people who say that, that like, like to your point, the Bible is a book of history, or the Bible was relevant then, it's not anymore, or, you know, those are the rules then, they're different now, so it doesn't apply. What do you say to that kind of approach to the Bible? Well, here's the thing for me. I've tried it for 45 years, and it works. <laughs> so you got proof. You got evidence. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's ba basically just that simple. Yeah. You know, if you, if you wonder if it works, mm -hmm. just try forgiving your enemies and see what it does for you. Mm -hmm. You know, try giving into the kingdom of God to help support the financing of the gospel and see how God blesses the truth. your finances. And God even says about tithing and giving, try me. Yeah. <laughs> see if I won't open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Mm -hmm. It's not, yes, yeah, some of the culture has changed, but God's, God never changes. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And the word does not get old and worn out. Mm -hmm. It works. I mean, it just works. That's all there is to it. Yeah. yeah. So are there specifics to um, help people with, the, we've talked a lot about, I guess, about the why study the Bible, but how about some of the practicals of the, the how and even the where? I mean, are, are there specifics that help with all of you for, for this to work better? Well, when people want to be comforted, they normally go to the Psalms. The thing I love about the Psalms is David was so honest with God about how he felt. And so that's good to know you don't have to try to hide how you feel from yes. God. And so yeah. if somebody's watching and they're just starting out and they're just a royal mess like I was in the beginning, God already knows everything about you. So go ahead and talk to him about it because it, it gets it out of you. Okay, I really basically studied based on what was going on in my life. Yeah. I studied my problems when I didn't have a clue how to be submissive to my husband. I mean, I studied those scriptures, and they were so 
hard <laughs> for me. Mm-hmm. What, you know, Still a little challenging <laughs> sometimes. Oh, my gosh. I was like, you have got to be kidding. <laughs> to adore my husband. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you said she rolled her eyes and said, adore. Yeah. adore. <laughs> <laughs> Submit. <laughs> <laughs> Joyce yeah. and I were just doing a little experiment <laughs> this week because we have a similar thing that Joyce has talked about that um, – our husbands like to help us. Yes. And oftentimes that help doesn't seem necessary to us. Yes. Is that a fair way to say it? Yes. A lot of times I don't want help. There it is. <laughs> Especially not the kind I'm getting. You can help me with the dishes. You, can, you, can, you, you take the trash out, but you don't need to tell me how to get out of the bathtub. <laughs> I've been doing that for a long time. You don't need to tell me how to use the knife. You know, my husband loves to tell me things that I think, what do you think I do when you're not here? Right. And it, I, I used to think that he did it because he thought I was stupid. But I found out he really is just trying to help me. Right. And you go, you go through the same thing. I do. With Exa- Tim. So much of the same thing. Yeah. We, I walk every morning. Tim walks with me quite often. There is one hole <laughs> in our neighborhood Every single time, Tim says, what, watch the hole. <laughs> watch the hole. I'm like, I, I know. Oh, it's new. I do it every day, and you're not always here. You know, it's like you said, how do I survive without you to tell me these things? So Joyce had a great idea of how to do this differently. So I just said in my conference last weekend, and Ginger jumped on board, and I said, from now on, I am going to just say thank you. Mm. <laughs> and I've done She's it. so painful to yeah. me. I've done it for two days. Yeah. Hi, how are you doing? Good. I'm doing good. Did, did you mean it when you said it, or do you just need to get well, the words out you have first? To That's go not there. a necessary <laughs> question. <laughs> that was well, not an experiment. <laughs> Baby let, steps here. Yeah, let's just start with doing it. Okay. I then, can do I'll, that. then I'll go to meaning it. Right. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. So, yeah, after this, we're on our walk. Tim says, watch the hole. And I swallowed really hard. And I just said, thank you. (laughs) I'm so proud of you. Probably just like that. And he looked at me a little confused. (laughs) And then, you know, he goes, you're welcome. Would you like like to join us, Aaron? I mean, I feel really nervous to commit to it because you're going to do it. Do it. I'm in. I'm in. I'm going to do it. It will all be tested tonight. So, that, yeah. That's how you, you just jump I'm going to do it. See. And the crazy thing, yeah. that kind of, the whole soft answer turning away wrath, like, yes. it applies to every relationship because y'all know I ain't married right that's now. That's true. But guess what? I kind of did the same thing with my ex-husband. What? Uh-huh. I didn't say thank you, a though. Soft it, was answer. it was a soft answer, though. Yeah. Well, it was, good for it you. Was, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank something. you. <laughs> But I you mean that. I, I meant that one. I meant that. Thank yeah. you. But no, seriously, he he had said we were co-parenting, doing some things, you know, with with my daughter, and yeah. it was just something that he had said something that was like yeah. and everything, <laughs> everything in me wanted to like snap back. I was like. You know what? You're right. Oh. Whoa. How can you be right? He's so wrong. Oh, that's another good one. You're right. Those oh, are hard. Oh, 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 I'm not there loves, you're right. <laughs> well, and you know I'm sorry. What? Thank but you. But here's the thing. You pivoted the entire conversation. Yeah. He says, uh, uh, um, okay. <laughs> that's like better than getting <laughs> it. I didn't to say. I cut him off. I cut him. I killed him with kindness. <laughs> that's better than getting a gift today. You're right. You're right. I said, you're, I said, you're right. Oh. Okay. Um, excuse me? Yes. Yeah. It works. Good. It's, it's, it's answer, so yeah. true, though. It's like we we can read all of these things, but unless we put them into yep. action, mm-hmm. then they're not really going to do anything mm-hmm. for us. And this this is one of those things where it's just like a daily application of trying to do your best with the things that just go against everything inside yeah. of you and your flesh that wants to say, I know what I'm doing, <laughs> yeah, <right>. you know? <laughs> but it, it's one of the things that God gives us because... He knows it will be better for us. Yeah, and yeah, his word is so good. And like one of the one of the ways that I do it um, is in the morning time, or actually at nighttime. If I know I've had a rough day with certain things, I try to find a scripture that I can read mm-hmm. that can help ease my mind before I go to bed. You yeah. know, like to read something, but then I'll keep that scripture on my phone too. So then yeah. when I wake up. Just, just so the devil will know, <laughs> not today. <laughs> well, that was yesterday's problem. So I look at that. You know, um, another yeah, yeah. practical thing. I talk. I talk about the apps that I use. That I have a list of scriptures that mm-hmm. 
I that are kind of like I'm a nerd to an extent. Like I like to subject matter them, and like like you say, Joyce, like I, I highlight the things that are big on my list, which is mm-hmm. anger, my attitude, fear, rejection, all those things, and I have them all categorized. So if I need it quickly, mm-hmm. then because sometimes I I. Going through this season, I couldn't just sit and open my Bible. And like, that was something I used to do so religiously. And like I said, almost hypocritically. I don't know. It was just for show. Like how I used to do it, um, it just has had to pivot over these past years for it to actually sink in. And then when I go on a walk, I'll just put on my earbuds and I'll let the Bible app play in my mm-hmm. ears too. You know, no, that's good. Like, yeah. I was I, just thinking about that Bible app. And you know, there's probably a lot of people that don't know about that. Yeah. But it is a wonderful tool, mm-hmm. and it's got Bible studies on it for you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've got studies on there. There's all kinds of mm-hmm. people that have studies on there, and there's a scripture for the day, and mm-hmm. you can that read helped. the whole chapter yeah. if you want. And so, you know, that might be a good place for yeah, some people absolutely. to start because it just makes it so, so easy for mm-hmm. you. It does. And let's get real. Like, you know, you can study the Bible for years and get a lot out of it, but we'll go through a season where it feels maybe dry mm-hmm. or or you have a hard time making it happen. Because mm-hmm. I don't want it to sound like we're all perfect in this. No. Oh, not at all. I don't think we're making ourselves <laughs> no. Well, people assume <laughs> things that, you know, we're not perfect. No, no, no not, not at all. Yeah. But Far I buried myself in eight papers. <laughs> <laughs> and rolled your eyes when you said a door. <laughs> yeah. But one of the things that I found during those hard times when when, you know, it just wasn't happening the way that I wanted it to, was to change something up. Don't be afraid, like you said, to try the app, to try a new version of something the Bible. Else, yeah. yeah, And yeah. even for me, it's even location. Mm-hmm. Like maybe I can go outside where I can kind of see nature. That really mm-hmm. helps me connect with God or, you know, sit in a different place in the house. Just mm-hmm. something that will change it up for you a little bit mm-hmm. can make a big difference mm-hmm. to kind of spark a new desire. Yeah, for sure. Or or even have one friend that you both read the same thing and then get on the phone and just talk about it. That's a great idea. Yeah. Just maybe you can't go to a Bible study or you can't go somewhere and be with a group of people or you don't know enough people. Well surely you know one person. Yeah. So if you know one other person who wants to learn the word, I mean, I know a lot of people who've told me they do that. I want yeah. to read the scripture. 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study and be eager and do your utmost to present yourself to God, approved, tested by trial, a workman that has no cause to be ashamed, correctly analyzing and accurately dividing rightly the word of truth. So he says, Study and be eager to know it and to understand it where you're not taking it mm-hmm. out of context. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. it, it's, it's so important easy to, to do. It's important to not study the Bible for one month and think you know everything and start, you know, giving everybody yeah. Bible lessons. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, that scripture, I used to, we used to say that. Of course, back in the day, I used to always learn all my scriptures in King James. Yeah. You know, that was like, study to show thyself approve a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. You know, like, <laughs> like uh. But now I think the older I get, I think that was why, why it makes it so tough for somebody like me that's been in church all my life. Because now they mean different. Like back in the day, it was like, study to show thyself approved. That's why I liked all the highlighters. But then you got to that little last part about the trial part. And I'm like, ugh. I don't want the trial part. Like mm. the scripture sounded so cool before that, <laughs> but then it's like, you got the <laughs> point. Then, then, then it took a turn. Then it took a nasty turn with <laughs> but, the trial part. But you know what? That part is far, and nobody likes it. But it's it makes you apply the word then. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And actually, by applying it, you mm-hmm. find out that it works. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so it gives you experience, which then gives you trust. Yes. And so that's all part of it. It's all part of it. You know, just to study it and say you know it, well, you don't know if you know it or not until you have to try it. Until you have to use it. Until you have to use it. Oh, man. It's really true. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And there's the point right there. (laughs) Like patience, for example. Oh, Oh, patience. (laughs) Everybody groans when they hear the word. And actually, the Greek says that it's 
a fruit of the spirit that is only developed under trial. Wow, that's Thanks. true. You can't you can't get it any other way. Mm-hmm. That's why people don't like to pray for patience because they know they're going to get trouble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's yeah. not that much fun. One thing that I like to do, and you talk about like mixing it up. I was um, this is I have like ten of these. It reminds me of your journals, Joyce, that you won't share. <laughs> I I brought this one to work today, and I thought if anybody finds this. I will have to hunt them down because, like, <laughs> pour my heart out into them. Yeah. So I was flipping through it, and, like, there's probably tears on these pages, but there's this is things that I've been through, and all of the things in here are connected to scriptures that I found on the things that I was walking through. And so all of these different areas, I've done different things with them. So, like, in some places in here, I'll, it's writing a prayer, and there's just a verse that connects to the thing I was going through. This day, um, my family had a stomach bug, so that was a bad day. That was not a fun day. And there's a <laughs> verse. But then in other places, I'll pick like a chapter or a book and then just write down like points that I'm getting from those verses. Mm-hmm. So That's like good. key takeaways that are in my own words, like a summarization of what I've just read. Mm-hmm. And so going through here and seeing all these different things that I've walked through and seeing the verses around them, like the Bible has walked me through so much. Yeah. Yeah. And it was so beautiful to look back and see his word is active in different ways that I use it. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. just sometimes I get out my journals and I just go back. Yeah. And read different ones and remember, yeah. wow. <laughs> Such a faith yeah. builder. Yeah. Cause I saw on here, I saw the verse I was clinging to on that day that I thought I might not make it. And then look at that. Two years later, I did it. I, and I that made thing it. Worked. Yeah. You made yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a good. It, it's good to look back. It's like gathering the stones, like the children of Israel when they were walking across. That's what I used to call it. Like as you walk across your dry land through your trial, mm-hmm. you're gathering the stones so you can go back and like use those stones to build an altar to give God praise for what He's right. brought you through. A monument um, to not a, forget. A yeah. monument to never forget. Yeah. And so, like that's why I look at like this book. Mm-hmm. I was gathering stones when I had the strength to gather them and I had Hmm. built an altar to give thanks. And then by the time I was weak and after that long trek of divorce and life and all the things, I didn't have the strength to like write anymore, but I was able to look back at what I had written and say like, God, you have brought me through this. I don't have the strength to write right now. So I, I just don't want everybody to think like, I'm supposed to write the whole time. There have been seasons where I couldn't Well, and some write people do not like to journal. I don't a lot and, of times. I and really that's okay. Don't. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. Yeah, sure. I really don't. And sometimes I did things with my memo, voice memo in my phone. Mm-hmm. Because like just talking to God, like recording it, like because I couldn't write and I put it in music. I, you know, I just... Yeah. Just do whatever I could do because I couldn't write anymore. I was just like, ugh, I couldn't do it. But looking back, and like some days I just colored. Like some, <laughs> some days I just drew and colored. I didn't, you know, and played worship music while I colored. You know, so yeah. I, I thought about getting a coloring book. Though. Yeah, they have them. They have the. Co- I got some too. Like that have like scriptures in them. You could just oh, color. Cool. They have them like on Amazon. That's fun. Yeah, I just colored. And that's a lot, like my daughter does that to this day. Like I got that before she went to school. I got her a couple of books that dealt with like, uh, like so they had scriptures in it, but also like mental health things and uh, affirmations, yeah. you know, and, and some, and a bunch of coloring pencils. And so she colors a so, lot. So Ginger, you're wanting us to be sure that we tell people how they can get started. And I think if they're listening, there's no rules. Yeah, it's mm. really good. You know, you uh, yeah. you find what works for you, mm-hmm. and we've given them several ideas mm-hmm. if they want to take an idea. But if you come up with something that's totally different than what we've said, the whole the whole thing is is however you learn. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the way you should learn. Like some people mm-hmm. do not like to read at all; they mm-hmm. don't even have good comprehension when they read. So you might need to listen to the Bible. On tape, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, there's that's different. Really good. There's yeah. always a different way. I mean, I know somebody who just said, "I don't care how slow I read; I just don't comprehend it." And the person is very smart, sure, but they're more of a hands-on person, and so mm-hmm. listening, yeah, is better than mm-hmm. reading for them. Yeah. yeah, I think that sets a lot of people free. Absolutely, mm-hmm. you know, take off the boundaries of the yeah. way you think you should be doing this. Mm-hmm. Try different things until you find something. That works for you. Yeah. yeah, the Bible's not a bunch of rules, and the way you do the Bible is not a bunch of rules. It's, it's, it's But let's just say, too, since we're at the beginning of the year, 
I'd really like to see everybody make some kind of commitment. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's great. If all you think you can handle is 10 minutes in the morning, mm -hmm. you know, start where you feel like you can. Mm -hmm. And if you're wanting something a little more specific, we've got a program called the 3030 Challenge. You can call and ask for that. It's studying, making a commitment to study the word for 30 days every day for 30 minutes. Yeah, you can find it life. online, and yeah. it, it walks you through it so beautifully. It's really easy and to sign up for it. we people tell us it's changed their life, oh, even yeah. people that have been walking with God for years and years. Yeah. Well, Aaron's I'm just, one of them. Aaron just yeah. changed yeah. my life, and yeah. I know Jesus, but yeah. that, that to commit to time with him every day, it, it, it will change your life. Yeah. There was one thing that keeps coming to my heart. You know, even if you know a scripture by heart, when I'm in trouble, like say I'm having a hard time forgiving somebody, I know the scriptures by memory mm -hmm. on forgiveness in the Bible, but I find that going and looking them up and reading them yeah. Yeah. is still better than just... Mm -hmm. thinking about them because I know them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Well, there is no reason now for anyone not to try something. <laughs> you know how valuable this has been in our life, and God loves you so much, just as much as any one of us, and He will do the very same thing for you. So we encourage you to start somewhere. We don't care how big or how small, start somewhere. Pray that God will reveal what He wants to do in your life and that that connection will grow. And I believe that you will be amazed, I really do, that you will be amazed at how your attitude toward reading and studying the Bible will change as well as your life on so many levels. Thank you all very Thank much. You. We we want to invite everybody while we're here, of course, to check out Enjoying Everyday Life because Joyce is talking in, about this more this week on Enjoying Everyday Life TV show, so you don't want to miss that, and to join us for a fun girls' night in. Yay! That's going to be fun. <laughs> so that is coming up Friday, January 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. It's 8 p.m. Eastern Time. You can join us live. It's interactive online. You don't have to leave your house. Um, Joyce is going to be talking about fighting anxiety. Yeah, so good. It's going to be really powerful stuff. Um, we're also going to have Brian, Brian and Katie Torwald. Amazing. We're going to have a talk it out discussion yes. with our friend Love McPherson. Yes. And of course, Joyce will be on that too. So we're, we're just going to have a great time. And if you register and you join us, um, you can also see it on demand. So let's say you're a little bit busy that evening. That's okay. You can still join us. And the great thing, just like Joyce was saying earlier, is find that friend to study with. This is a way to do it. Yes. Find that friend. You know, join this great big group of people at Girls Night In who are going to talk about God and His Word and fight against anxiety together. So go online to joycemeyer.org slash night in to register for that right now. And there's so much more. Don't go away yet. <laughs> much over there. Uh, we have a free resource for you, which is great. It's called How to Study the Bible. And it's Joyce's little booklet that you can get physical or digital. So go to joycemeyer.org slash talk it out for that. Woo! I'm exhausted. You did take a breath. <laughs> you did good. Well, thanks, everybody. We appreciate. Go study the Bible, and we'll see you next time. It's a new year and time to kick anxiety out into the cold and snuggle in for a night of girl talk and encouragement. Join us for a Love Life Girls Night In with Joyce, a live streaming event featuring worship with Katie and Brian Torwald, a lively talk it out discussion with guest Love McPherson, and Joyce teaching us how to tackle anxiety head on. Friday, January 27th at 8 p.m. Eastern. Call your girlfriends and register today at joycemeyer.org slash livestream.